you always wait so you don't record like extra <laughs> minutes? Yes. The whole idea. <coughs> we're, we're too lazy to cut it. Got it. Yeah, it's well, it's good to see everybody. You know, um, a lot of fun things going on right now. Players back in the building. So it's good to see a lot of those faces again that we haven't seen now for it kind of just feels like a couple weeks. And at the same time, we got the draft prep going on upstairs with our coaching staff. So uh, Duke's deep into that process right now and, and had a chance to have some college guys come through here and visit with them a little bit more. So a lot going on right now. Uh, a lot of exciting stuff that keeps us on our toes. And I uh, look forward to seeing these players get back in the building today. Just gaining a little bit more information. Maybe some of you didn't have a chance to meet with at the combine in a formal setting, so we didn't all get a chance to do it. Um, but yes, I, I, I meet with these guys, you know, for for any amount of time. It kind of depends on the guy. But it's good to see them one more time as we're in the last month of prep here, um, so they get a chance to kind of go around the building and meet with everyone, you know, personnel upstairs, position coach, myself, coordinators. Uh, so it's good to get some work up on these guys. Um, I, we got a, a, a big group coming in tomorrow, um, and then that'll be the end of it, I believe, uh, the next two days. Do you expect pretty close to full participation with this voluntary workout program? It remains to be seen. You know, it is voluntary. We've always had a really good turnout from our guys. Uh, that's what I like, you know, and, and our season's, you know, been running long here these last couple of years, and so um, I'm sure that there will be some guys that are still in, a little bit in their routine wherever they're at. Uh, for another couple of weeks, and that's that's generally that's pretty normal. Zach, guys coming off major injuries, obviously Lael and Cheeto. How are they coming along, and how are you monitoring? Them? So far, everybody that's in that injury bucket um, has been progressing as we had hoped. You know, there's been no setbacks from those guys. I won't put timelines on any of them, but um, you know, the guys that I've I've seen in here doing the rehab, some of them are elsewhere doing the rehab. Um, I'm sure more of them will come back today, but um, so far, so good on all those guys. Mm -hmm. sort of the plan every year. Do you feel comfortable where you guys are right now going into the draft of how you were able to, to do that and land the guys you did in free agency? I do. I think we put ourselves in a good position um, to just keep keep adding to our team. And, um, you know, when there's good players there, you can take them and, and not always feel like you're just plugging major holes. You know, it's um, – I think we've got, you know, a good group here in the building that's under contract. And, and then you get a chance to go to the draft and – and uh, take what fits our team and allows us to go win championships. And so I think we, we've put ourselves in a good position that way. What does having an extra couple of weeks this year compared to last year when you only had May and June allow you to get done this offseason? Just getting the players back in the building a little, I think two weeks earlier than we did last year. Um, it'll be more running and lifting for those guys, you know, and it's really just taking the two weeks that we spent on the Super Bowl that one year and giving them that off. This year we didn't have those, so getting them back in a little bit sooner and getting the whole nine-week program there. Um, for us, the off-season program is just about refreshing our schemes. So when the guys come back for training camp, they're, they're ready to go compete and they're ready to hit the ground running. Um, at the same time, the camaraderie portion of things, you know, we got some new players. So, you know, getting them up to speed, getting them to know their teammates. So, again, that they can help us in the in the uh, maximum way that we expect those guys to help us. So those are really the two main things for us um, to get in here and, and refresh our schemes. And then, and then you know, um, the, the team chemistry portion of things that's so important to us, getting a chance to, to spend these nine weeks together and get to continue to know each other. How much is that built now, the, the team chemistry and camaraderie portion? It's good, but you don't want to take it for granted. You know, last year was last year, and this next year is this next year. And so – Again, it's it's guys coming in. Some guys are in new roles. Some new players come to the building. You lose guys, and so you just don't want to take it for granted that just because we've had it in the past that we're going to continue to have it. Again, we've got great character in the locker room, so um, in the back of my mind, I do always feel good about it. But uh, you just don't want it's not something you want to take for granted, and you want to get these guys together as much as you can. The depth in this tight end class has been talked about a lot. How important was it for you guys to add Hunter Smith Jr. and then we signed Drew as well before the draft? Yeah, I, I think so. Now you you feel good about um, the guys that are in that room right now, and, and so again, that's just one of those things that allows you to take the best players that are out there on their team that'll help you win. But I feel really good about adding Irv. Um, he's a good weapon for us, you know, based on what he's done so far. We liked him coming out in the draft and, and the years he spent in Minnesota. I think he fits what we're looking for. Getting Drew back, 
um, is, is important for us as well. You know, he's been so valuable for us, you know, and he got hurt in that second week and didn't get a chance to play, but we like what he's done for us over the years. And, and then we got all those guys, Devin and, and a bunch of other guys that have um, really done a nice job last year, whether it was on the practice squad or on the 53. And so guys that were excited about their future also. Did you sign Irv to be the starter for the upcoming season, or is that kind of still open? Yeah, we think he can come in and play that role for us. Again, there's always competition in that room, but um, that's the vision that we have for Irv is to come in there and, and fill that role that Hayden had for us. The offense as a whole evolved over the course of the season. When you look at the draft, do you look for guys who – kind of fit the version of the offense that you guys ended up with at the end of the season, or you just look more genuinely when you look at a uh, scheme fits? You just you, you take each year as its own, and, and you get into training camp, and certainly you got a vision for how you think the season's going to play out. Things change in training camp. Things change, you know, the first quarter of the season, the second quarter. It's, it's all new seasons for us as the year progresses, and – some of it's dictated by things you think were going to be a strength that maybe aren't as strong, things that maybe you thought were going to be a weakness that you were better at than you anticipated, um, injuries that come on, players that come on. So, you know, we, we go into the off-season period reflecting back on what we did and what we can tweak and be better at. And then um, training camp, often, I mean, I think all four training camps we've had so far, there's there's been a portion where you hit training camp, you think, man, this, this little package here is a lot better than maybe we anticipated, and let's expand on that. And so, um, you know, it's it's always a fun process to go through because it's uh, it never goes quite how you think it's going to go, and there's always things that evolve that um, that are fun to toy with. Given how much eleven personnel y'all use, what do y'all? I mean, what do, what does it tie into this offense because of that um, need to be able to do really well on a play and playoff basis? Make plays for us. You know, that that's that's the number one thing you look for, um, and guys that that can go in and make plays and, and at the same time um, they there's a lot that's on their plate you know they, they got to be able to block in the run game they can't be a liability and protection and and so um, you know finding guys that aren't deficient in any of those areas um, that also add value to the offense you know those are things that, that we really look for in that tight end room. You only ran I think 11 at a, at a high rate since you've been here is that still something that you, you enjoy what have you seen that now that you have four years of data doing that here how do you like that so far? That just speaks to our receiver room you know, as much as anything, we, we're always willing to be flexible and play to the strengths of our team. Uh, but it's really hard when you've got the three starting receivers that we have to take those guys off the field. And, and there's times where you certainly do it, um, whether to uh, you feel like you got a scheme advantage versus an opponent you're playing against, or um, it's just something we got in that week. But but at the same time, we feel like it's it's hard to take those three weapons off the field. And um, so it, again, it has more to do with the the. Um, really, really good personnel that we got in the receiver room and less how we feel about the tight end room or how we feel about our direction as an offense. The second wave of free agency after the draft, you know, the draft is done and now uh, guys are still out there and everybody's patiently, you know, waiting to see uh, where their market value is going to be and all that sort of thing. Historically, the franchise has done a pretty good job of finding a couple of nuggets in that, yeah. in that time frame. What's the key to, to, to being able to sort that out? Well, I, I think it's... You know, you get a chance to go through the draft and, and see where there's some depth areas that you need to continue to improve on. You see what's out there. There's also, you know, there's some veterans that maybe aren't in a rush to, to enjoy the off-season program, and uh, so they take their time. And and so, you know, that that's just generally speaking every year. I think those are the two sides of it. And um, But, again, I, th I feel like, you know, Duke's put us in a really good position to, to make the best decisions we can make during the draft. What made Orlando Brown a tough guy to play against when you guys have faced him a lot over the last few years? He's a really smart player. His size, number one, stands out to you. Um, he's got good athleticism, uses his length really well. Um, but he's a really smart player as well, you know, so, he, so he's got a lot of things going for him that I think have allowed him to be successful. Um, he's played on winning teams, you know, over the course of his entire career at Oklahoma and Baltimore and Kansas City. And, and so he's got really high expectations and understands what the standard is. And so we're excited to get him in the mix. How many of the uh, six free agents, I think it is, yeah. signed so far? are going to be participating in this off-season workout program, voluntary, and if they do, how important is that to kind of assimilating here? You know, I, I meet with the team here at 1030, so I'm not going to put my foot in my mouth and, okay. and say they're all going to be here or they're all not going to be here. Um, I feel good about where they're at. I think they're all yeah, excited. The yeah, they're excited to, to meet their teammates. Um, that's what I'm excited about in the off-season portion of things is to, to get them going with the group, their position group, their unit, the team, see how we do things. Um, so that when they show up and we put the pads on in training camp, they feel like they understand the routine of things here and how we operate, how we meet, 
um, where we practice, how you walk to the field, how you go to the indoor, how you get to the game field and all that stuff. And so then the, the, they feel comfortable when, when really the, the lights are brightest once training camp starts. So that's really the process we follow here. That's where I mentioned the camaraderie and the chemistry part of things. That's where those six guys fit in now. And then the draft picks come in, you know, usually the second weekend in May. And, um, you know, they, they, they get going with the group as well. I started by welcoming them back, you know, and giving them an overlay of what this offseason is going to be about, what we're striving to do. I won't get too specific with it all, but um, but it's, it's more just a welcome back and here, here's the expectations for these next couple of weeks and here's what we're trying to accomplish. You've had the experience now the last couple of years of getting really close to the ultimate goal, Super Bowl, AFC Championship. As a professional football coach, do you want guys to carry that with them in the offseason for these motivation, whatever it is, or do you want them just to clear that and move on? There's a balance, you know. You you want that. I I think about it all the time. You know those those games that you finish at the end of the year that you didn't you didn't win. <clears throat> I don't think that's unique to any team in this league. I think everybody feels that way about your last game. Um, but at the same time, it's more about taking the experiences that we've had, whether on this team or other teams, and what can you improve on. And so maybe there's a situation that arose somewhere in the playoffs that we could have been better at. So those are the things I want those guys to take with them uh, to remember. You know. And so if you're in those moments again. Um, there's maybe a different way to approach it. And so th those are, you know, there's just a lot of things. We, it's important that we learn from our experience each and every year, whether you're a player or a coach. And, and those are the things that I find the most valuable for the team taking into the next season. Is there one that comes to mind for you, taking something and do it, taking a different approach? There's a lot of things, you know, that, that you just want to learn from. It, it's maybe, maybe, the, um, maybe it's not fully the approach. Maybe it's just a decision you made. Um, but, but again, I, I just think it's things that you got to continue to learn from. So when you're in those moments again, you can do the best thing you can to help your team win. I, I know the plan at right tackle is for there to be a competition. Have you talked to Jonah at all this offseason? Uh, you know, I'll keep all that stuff private about my conversations with our players. Do you see Jackson Carmen as someone that can play right tackle? He's kind of switched around a lot. I do. How big of a challenge is that? Yeah. I, well, it's, you know, he's practiced there last year, you know, and so he's, uh, Frank does a really good job of, of all the guys that were not starters for us, um, making sure they work because you never know what position they have to go in there. And so Jackson did a really good job working all those positions. His number was called there at left tackle. And, and now his number is going to be called there at right tackle to go over there and compete. And so, again, year three for Jackson, we got really high expectations for him. Um, I really liked his approach over the course of last season. I think that, that he really got a feel for what the NFL is like and what the process is like. And, and so now going into year three, I think is a great opportunity for him to, to continue to, to show us that he's got what it takes to be a, be a full-time starter for us. What are, these, what are these next two weeks like for you? I assume your guys' draft board is pretty much close to being set. So for you as the head coach, what do you get out of these last two weeks? Well, it's really led by Duke, you know. And so um, I sit in the back of the room, and if he wants my opinion on something, I'll give it. Uh, but I think that there's a really good process that's been followed here that uh, allows us to feel really confident going into the Thursday night draft night. And, and it's really, you're going to utilize every second leading up to that. And so we're still going through that process. I'll let Duke, you know, speak to all that. I won't get into that business. But um, I really, I think this is the fifth draft I've been here. Um, it's a really good process. I think that Duke's approach is the right one and, and how he gathers opinions and how he makes the, the decisions and, and factors in everybody um, and puts us in a really good position where we feel good about the guys that we bring in here. And, and again, there's still more time. I mean, we've still got probably seven days of work left um, to get to that spot where, where you feel really good on Thursday. Every year you're going to have new players, so you have to go through the indoctrination process from square one. Yep. It can be tedious for guys that have been here the whole time. Yeah. With you potentially. But your coaching staff has been intact. You don't have to go back to square one, you know, every off season. What, what have your off season has been like, you know, compared to your early stages with, with these guys as opposed to now, where you don't have to go back to square one, you can, you know, jump in at a different different spot. Well, it it allows us to to invest and and supplement our scouts in the draft, you know, to where guys can really dive in and, um, you know, spend a good thirty days focusing on the draft, and so, you know, if if Duke or the scouts have questions for our coaches, we're available to answer them and. Um, feel like we've done some good work on these players <clears throat> and acquiring the talent. And then you get a chance. To, it's obviously done for a reason, but then you get a chance to turn your attention to your own players. So we'll spend the next two weeks here making sure Duke's got everything he needs from us 
Um, then we make the picks, and then we immediately turn our attention to our own players that are here in the building. So it's a really good process that we follow that allows guys to invest their time wisely and, and um, still get a chance to turn our attention to the scheme and make sure we're ready for our guys in our meetings. Yeah, I feel good about Joe. You know, I see him around the building oftentimes. Um, so I think he's got a great process that he goes through in the springtime. And um, you can speak to him, I'm sure, whenever he's here today or whatever it is. I don't know when their next media availability is, but um, I'll let him speak to all that. You talked about the camaraderie of, uh, you know, the off-season workouts. How different is it when you guys lose veterans like Jesse and Vaughn and Samaj? Is it a little different or is it kind of like last year when you guys lost some guys as well? Well, we, we've got so many veterans that have those leadership roles for us and those qualities. Um, yeah, you, you lose some guys that have been a big part of what we've done, but we also added some guys. You know, you look at these veterans that we added that, that really had leadership roles in the teams they played on. And so it'll take some time for them to um, incorporate themselves into how we do things, but um, oftentimes we added them because of some of the things that we'd heard about their leadership skills combined with their on-field talents. So I feel really good about the – the guys that we got in this building, the you know, to, to lose some key veterans. Um, we've added some key veterans, and again, our guys will continue to step up in the locker room that have been here for a number of years.